Leviticus chapter 9. Let's jump right in. Verses 1 and 2 says, And it came to pass on the eighth day that Moshe called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said unto Aaron, Take thee a young calf for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering without blemish and offer them before Yahuwah. Now it says it came to pass on the eighth day. What, is, what are they talking about the eighth day? Yes. The eighth day, spiritually speaking, scripturally, and scriptural numeric speaks of new beginnings. Uh, actually, what they're um, speaking to is from chapter 8, when the Levites and the priests, they were to be consecrated for seven days, that they weren't supposed to leave out the, uh, the tabernacle, remember? Right. Yes. I know that was a whole week ago, huh? But, <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, that's, uh, that's where this is, the consecration time is past, and now it's the eighth day. And Moshe called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel, and he's telling them, uh, he's telling Aaron, take a young calf for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering without blemish and offer them before Yahuwah. Okay, now, something that was pretty interesting here, um, where it says, take thee a young calf, the word young there is actually ben in the Hebrew Number 1121, which is actually the word for a son. You know, and you need to understand the concept of a son from the Hebraic mindset, you know, means it speaks to like the builder of the household, you know, the, or the builder, the builder of the, the uh, household name. Because uh, if you think about it, that's just what a son does. He builds yeah. the, house, the household's name. He, he builds the family name, I mean. Amen. You know, that's why, you know, folks be wanting sons and they don't they want their name to die. You know, they, they build the house, the house's name. Because when women marry off, you know, they take on another yeah, name. Another name. Yeah. You know, so this is uh, how they view the sons as a builder of the family name. But there's another word here that you don't see in the English of the King James. And it's Bakar. And it's number 1241 and it, it means a beef or or uh, beef, you know, a, a cattle animal, you know, it comes from Bakar number 1239, meaning to break forth, to inspect, to admire, to care for, to consider, you know, and you don't even see this word, you know, it's not even translated in, in the, in, into the English in, in the, um, King James, it just says young, you know, but young isn't young, young is actually a son, you know, and Bakar you know, isn't even represented at all, you know, but it means to break forth, to inspect, to admire, to care for, to consider something, okay? And then it says, uh, calf. This word calf is a gale, number 5695, and it means a male calf as freaking, frisking around, okay? And it comes from a gale, number 5696, different numbers, same word, but anyway. Uh, means to revolve, to revolve, that is to go around. Now, whenever I see the scriptures talking about revolving around something or, or, or uh, going circular, um, in a circular path, you know, I, it always brings to mind Yah's way, yes. you know, his Moedim, which is a type of cycle. Mm -hmm. It's a cycle that begins in the spring, you go around, and then it starts over again. Mm -hmm. You know, and we keep going around and around this cycle yep. all the days of our life. You know, we start with the spring, go through as more deem, it ends, we go through the winter or night portion of the year and start over again, you know, and we go around and around and around. You know, so that always speaks to me of, of his Moedim. Okay, now, where was I? Uh, sin offering. Sin offering, which we spoke about before, but I just threw it in here. Um, it's Kata, number 2403. Means an offense, come from Kata, number 2398. Meaning to miss to sin, to forfeit, to lack, to expiate, to repent, to bear the blame, or cleanse. 
you know, uh, and and some more stuff that it, it can speak to. But essentially, you know, that, that's the, you know, you have to kind of look in there and see, like, where all this stuff is derived from to really get a full picture of scent, you know. Uh, yes, it's to miss the mark, you know. It's, it's to have lack. It's, it's, to, it's to have to repent, you know. It's to have to bear the blame of something. You know, it's, it's it needing to be, to, to cleanse, you know. Well, if you wasn't dirty, then you would never need to be cleansed, right? Mm -hmm. right. You know, if you didn't never do nothing, do, do nothing to make you sorrowful, then you would never have to repent. If you didn't never do anything, you know, that's blameworthy, then you wouldn't have to bear the blame. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you want to follow the line of thinking there. Okay, uh, Ram, which is I yield. Number 352, and it speaks to something strong, something powerful, a chief, you know, a type of chiefs, you know, a, something strong, powerful, and top of his game, you know, the chief of, of, of something, okay? Uh, burnt offering is Ola, number 5930, meaning a step or stairs. It actually speaks to an ascent or an ascending. You know, kind of like uh, up in smoke, like smoke ascending up to Elohim, you know, uh, which comes from the burnt offering. Okay? Uh, without blemish. Without blemish is Tamim, number 8549, and it speaks to something entire, to the entire thing. It speaks to integrity, to truth, <coughs> something complete. You know, kind of see entire, complete, something perfect. Okay? Now, what I've done is I've taken the definitions and the understandings of, of, of these terms and I put it directly into the verse that we might see an alternate translation. You know, uh, and within this alternate translation, it reads quite a bit different than the current translation we have in the KJV. Well, that being said, Leviticus 9.2, alternate translation, and it reads, And he said unto Aaron, Take thee a son, building the family name, considering it, inspecting it, caring for it. One that's revolving, that is one that's walking through his Moedim <coughs> energetically, a strong, powerful chief, that ascend in perfect truth with integrity and draws near the face of Yahuwah. That reads quite a bit differently, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it sound like it could be speaking to anybody in particular? <laughs> Sounds like Yahushua, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yes. It could definitely be. He did, he was a son, and he was building the family mm -hmm. name. You know, he did consider it, he inspected it, he cared for it, he was walking in the Moedim, he was energetic about it, he was a strong, powerful chief that walked the earth, and he did ascend in perfect truth with integrity, and he drew near the face of Yahuwah, which he is still at, seated at his right hand. Right. You know, and, you know, that's just, you know, I thought that was kind of awesome. Hallelujah. We're going to take a look at uh, verse 3, Leviticus 9.3. It says, Unto the children of Israel, thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year, without blemish, for a burnt offering. Okay? Now, there's a surprise in this verse as well. That, you know, um, is this the one? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, I thought I highlighted it, but I guess not. Okay, uh, well, first, like where you see both, I have it in, in gray. In, in verse 3 where it says both, you see it's, it's lighter. That's because, you know, that was um, implied, you know, they, they took the liberty of putting that there. It's not actually in the text. But uh, of the first, of the first is, um, is, it's not that's it's that's not there, man. I don't see where I where I where I put it. Uh, let me hold on one second. 
one second. Now, I, I know I put it, but it's not, it's not there. But, okay, well, I'll just have to tell you. Of the first, where it says of the first year, the words, the three words of the first is actually the word ben, number 1121, which means son. That we just that we just went over uh, here in verse two, they translated it as young, uh, and it was it was presented along with Bakar. Now Bakar isn't isn't actually uh, here in verse three, but this word of the first that's Ben, that's son. In the Hebrew. I thought that was so crazy. I was like, how's this here? I mean, how does how did they get son out of how did they get of the first out of the word for son? <laughs> wow. You know, I thought that was pretty bizarre. You know, it kind of threw me for a loop. See, but that's why I look up every word. Amen. Because that that is, you know, I thought that was pretty uncanny. Okay. So <coughs> excuse me. Of the first, that's actually son. So it's actually saying son year. And it's actually translated this way like 51 times in the King James. You know, and they're all dealing with the sacrifices in this manner. And they're all saying like of the first year. You know, but it's actually son year. Son and year. To, together, of the first year is actually sun and year, or sun shanei shana, you know, uh, or ben shanei shana in the Hebrew. And I thought that was like really weird. And I'm like, because when I when I seen that, I was like, okay, this is first. This has to be rishon. I'm thinking it's rishon, which is the uh, normal Hebrew word for for first. And I think that's like eighty six twenty three or eighty eighty three sixty three or something like that. But uh, but it's reshown is usually the word that's that's translated as first, and here it is. They they've taken son and translated it as first. Mm. Yeah, that's what I said. Hmm. Mm. You know, <laughs> how do you get that? Okay, but I can understand. You know, I'm not gonna beat them up too much because I can understand because it really does not make sense. If you say, and unto the children of Israel, thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering, a calf and a lamb, son, year, without blemish, for a burnt offering. Mm, right. See, <laughs> it doesn't make sense if you don't know Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you know Yahshua, and you understand the brick out of shine, what he brought, then it it will begin to make sense. You'll see. Hold on. Uh, let's back up. We're going to take a look at this, these other terms. The kid, the goats, the calf, the lamb. Uh, we already went over the calf. Mm -hmm. But the lamb and the year. Okay. The word kid. Now this is a, this is a uh, peculiar word too. Mm -hmm. This word kid is Sayir. Sayir number 8163, right? And it means shaggy. And I had some pictures. I couldn't. My internet was tripping and I couldn't get them on there. But it means shaggy. It means devil. You know, it means a fawn. A fawn is, is, is it, uh, a goat god that's half goat and half man. I'm not making this up, y'all. That's what this word means. You know, it means a fawn. <coughs> <coughs> and a fawn is a goat god that's half goat and half man. How many of you heard of Azazel? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, Azazel is a fawn. Mm -hmm. And you see, um, oftentimes if, if you, mm -hmm. uh, you may have seen him, you know, depicted, you know, sitting down with his legs crossed and he's doing something like this. Mm -hmm. You know, which means as above, so below, you know, which is, deals with uh, the coat and, and all that crap. But, you know, point being, he's a, he's a fawn. Okay? He's a goat god, half goat, half man. 
you know, see, now the way y'all teaches is he, he's painting, he's painting a picture. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna allow him to paint that picture. We're gonna just clear your mind and and and, and just let it be like that 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 whiteboard over there, just blank, you know, and let let him paint this picture because he's painting a picture. Okay, now this is the word for kid, sayir. It means shaggy, that will a fawn, a uh, goat got half goat, half man. It comes from Sawar, number 8175, meaning to storm, meaning to be tempestuous. That is to have strong and turbulent or conflicting emotions. Mm. And it could even mean to cause to shiver or fear, you know, speaking to those emotions. Yeah. Okay? Then we have the word goats. Goats is, is eggs, you know, where we get azazel, you know. Mm. Uh, that's the root of, uh, of his name. A's, number 5810, meaning the goat, from Azaz. Now, you, you, you see see the root of it? Azaz, that's where you get Azaz, Azazel or Azazel. Uh, number 5810, meaning to be stout, to be strong, thick, or brave and determined. Okay? So, then we have Lamb, which is Kedis, number 3532, meaning to dominate. And it speaks to a ram, you know, that's just old enough to butt. So, you know, he, he's, uh, he's starting to get his little horns, and he, now he's going to butt stuff, you know. He want to he go through and dominate anybody he can dominate, you know. <laughs> Feeling like a teenager, you know, start feeling themselves, you know. Uh, th thinking they're a young man, you know, they want to go trying people. Hey, what you say? No. <laughs> you know. But uh, that's lamb. Now, year. Year is Shana Shana, and it's number 841. And, you know, this is a real important word in Scripture, and, and, and I don't think people really look at it, you know, but, you know, it, it, it helps to understand the, the scriptural perspective of what a year is. First and foremost, it is a revolution of time, you know, just as we would think, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a revolution of time, and it comes from Shana, which is, part of um, its makeup, number 8138, meaning to fold, to duplicate, by implication to transmute, i.e. to change in form, nature, or substance, to do again, to duplicate, to double, to repeat, to do the second time, you know, so a year from the from scriptural perspective is speaking to a revolution of time that is a cycle of time in which something is changed in form, nature, or substance mm -hmm. and is done again, duplicated, doubled, repeated, or done over a second time. Everybody still with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. If you're still with me, <laughs> what in the year, within the year, is duplicated or done over or repeated a second time? Something that's done over or repeated within Every, the year. Day. Uh, no, it's a cycle. Okay. It's a cycle. And what it is, is, is uh, the equinox. Yeah, so it's the cycle that's connected to the equinox. You have two equinoxes that occurs within the year. You have your vernal equinox that occurs in the spring, and you have your auto equinox that occurs in the fall, okay? Now, in the vernal equinox or the spring equinox, you get to a point to where there's the word equinox comes from equal, and an equinox is when there's equal day and night. How many hours is in a, is in a, in a day? 21? 24. Act like y'all know then. 12, there's 24 hours in a day and a night, so if, if they were equal, how many hours would be in a day? 12. How many hours would be in a night? 12. Okay, that's the equinox when there's 12 hours in a day and 12 hours in a night. Now that only happens twice within this revolution of time we call a year. Okay? And when it happens the first time, something, something, um, it, something happens 
what happens is the in the vernal equinox, the first time that it happens, at the day after, the day begins to stay out just a little longer than the night. That's right. And then it keeps on staying out longer and longer and longer and longer and longer until it reaches a climax. Mm -hmm. And that climax is what man calls the first day of summer. Mm -hmm. It's called the summer solstice. And that's when the the sun stays out the longest of the year. That's the day that it stays out the longest. So that's the longest day of the year. Mm -hmm. Now, after that day, it begins to dissipate. Mm -hmm. And it begins to, to do just what it done, except for in reverse order. <clears throat> okay? Mm -hmm. Until it gets to the auto equinox, or the fall equinox, when, what does equinox mean? Mm -hmm. Equal day and equal night. So when it gets back, it gets right back down to that starting point, and then something happens. It changes in form or nature. It changes in form or nature or substance because now instead of the day ruling over the night, the night begins to rule over the day. Okay? And then the night begins to stay out to be longer and longer and longer until it reaches its climax, mm -hmm. which is called the winter solstice, mm -hmm. which is the longest night of the year. And if you have the, if it's the longest night of the year, then it's also the shortest what of the year. Right. And if the winter solstice is the longest day of the year, it's also the shortest what of the year? Night. night. And the cycle is repeated until it comes back to a starting point mm -hmm. in the vernal equinox, and that makes one year. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay? That is the scriptural perspective of a year. Now, within that year, you know, we know that there's other increments of time. And we're not going to get into that right now. But I do want, I, I do want you to understand what scripturally speaking, a year is. Okay? All right. Now, as we did with verse 2, we're going to do with verse 3. We're going to take the understandings and we're going to, uh, we've inserted it directly into the verse and we're going to see how it reads and, and we're going to expound on it a little bit as we go, all right? Leviticus 9.3, an alternate translation, if you would. And unto the sons... Because that word children is also sons, number 121. So unto the sons of Israel, and Israel, you know, I like to look at Israel as anyone who wrestles with good and evil mm -hmm. and prevails by holding on to good or Yah. Yes. Amen. Because that's how Yaakov received the, the blessing to begin with. Mm -hmm. You know, and the angel told him, the angel of Yah told him, because you have wrestled with man and with Elohim and have prevailed, your name shall be Israel. So, if we wrestle with, with uh, the ways of man and the ways of Elohim and hold on to Yah until we receive our blessing, we shall prevail as well. We shall be Israel. Okay. And unto the sons of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a fawn, that is, Take ye one that's half beast, half man. Okay? Now I want you to, I want you to, this is this is when I want you to start letting letting that uh mm. that paint, what do what do people paint with? Paintbrush. Mm -hmm. Letting that paintbrush start putting something on that canvas, okay? And now imagine a picture should be forming in your mind. Take ye a fawn, someone that's half beast, half man. You know, they have strong and turbulent or conflicting emotions. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about someone that's half beast, half man. They got these strong, turbulent, or conflicting emotions. You know, uh, but you're going to take one of them that's, that's actually stout, that's strong, that's brave and determined, and that's willing to bear the blame. One that revolves, that is, that's going through the way of Elohim. And dominates. They're dominant. And they're a son which has changed in nature. 
that has been repeated. Their son, which has changed in nature, that has been repeated, duplicated, doubled. They've done something again. Anything coming to mind? Anything coming to mind? Think, think Brick Kadasha. Think New Testament. Think Yahshua. Think what we know about quote unquote Christianity. What the scripture said, what does the scripture say that has to change in nature and that has to be repeated or duplicated, that has to be doubled? What does scripture say that has to be done again? Born again. Ding, 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 ding. Number one answer. And that's what it's speaking to. It's speaking to one that is half beast and half man. What is the beast side? Flesh. Flesh. And half man. Mind. Now, it says that has turbulent or conflicting emotions. The mind that wants to serve Yah, it wants to do just that. But the beast nature that's within the flesh wants to do something totally different, does it yeah. not? Yeah. As a matter of fact, the word even tells us in Romans that it's at enmity with Elohim. Yes. So can you see your picture of this Sayyid? Can you see the picture of this Sayyid, this half beast, half man? You know, Yah wants you to put that on the altar. He wants to consume that which is not of him. Okay? Now, it's speaking to one that's, that's of such a one, but such a one that's, that's stout, that's strong, that's brave and determined, and that's willing to bear the blame. One that revolves, that is walking in his moadim, and dominates that beast nature. It's speaking of a son which has changed in nature, changed that, changed that beast nature that was ruling into a heavenly nature that has been born again, that has been, re been repeated, born again, duplicated. Another one has come along, deviled, a replacement for the one that's about to be consumed. Entirely, completely, with truth and integrity for a burnt offering. That is to go before the face of Yahuwah. Can anybody see that? You know, this is speaking to many other saints who pick up their torture stakes and follow Yahshua. Because those saints, they all, at some point, would be half beast, half man. They all, at some point, would have to be born again. They would have to be duplicated, deviled, repeated. They would have to change in nature in order to ascend or draw near the face of Elohim. And they do so, they're willing to bear the blame that they might cover their loved ones, even as the Messiah did. No greater love than a man lay up down his life for his friends. Amen? Yeah. You know, so... Here in verse 2, it's speaking about the priests and the elders. They're sacrificing a type of Yahshua. And it's speaking about the people sacrificing a type of saints or a type of those that follow Yahshua. 
that follow Yahshua into being born again or father from above. That's willing to lay down their lives even as he laid down his life, you know, to follow his example. To lay down their lives for those they know and love, even as he laid down his life for them, for them he knew and loved. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, the Yahudim back in the day, they would have had a hard time getting this without understanding Yahushua and the teachings and instructions that he brought. See, because they wouldn't have known anything about being born again. So it wouldn't have made no sense to them a son year. So I can see how they would translate that the first of the first year. You know, because they probably toiled with it and toiled with it and and can't don't get it, yeah? Mm. <laughs> you know, because it doesn't make sense except you know the teachings and instructions of Yahushua. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's oftentimes said that the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed and the, and the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. Mm -hmm. And this is a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was just truly awesome because... Yah truly did come to open the eyes of the blind. And this is one of the ways that he has opened the eyes of the blind. Because the blind, i.e. the priest, the Aaronic priesthood, would have never been able to get this. And still can't get it. Lest they accept Yahushua and his teachings and instructions. Yeah. 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 You know, Yahushua and his teachings and instructions is the key to unlocking Disunderstand. Without that key, without that light that he brought, one would never be able to see this. And people thought he was just speaking allegorically when he said he was the light of the world. No. He truly is the light of the world. And we see him here bearing light. And I just... I think that that's so awesome that something that was written so long ago prior to him even coming to the earth <coughs> was already set up to reveal nuggets of truth and understanding for when he would come. That's Yasmin. Verse 4. Leviticus 4 says also a bullock and a ram for peace offerings to sacrifice before Yahuwah, a meat offering mingled with oil, for today Yahuwah will appear unto you. This word bullock is short, Numbers 7794, and it means a bullock as a traveler. You know, so when you think bullock, think traveler. It comes from short, um, different number, same word. Number 7788, to turn, that is to travel, you know, as a harlot or a merchant. And the reason they say that is because those were the predominant travelers during that time. You know, uh, they had to travel to conduct their business. Enough said on that, huh? Uh, now, it can mean to go around and spy out because as, you know, as they're traveling, you know, as we've seen the spies, the 12 spies, uh, um, were sent out to spy out the land. You know, they were acting like they were just traveling through the land, but they, at the same time, were spying it out. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it can mean to observe, that, and that's in a bad sense, but in a good sense, it can mean to observe or care for. It can, you know, in a good sense, it can mean to observe or care for, and in a bad sense, it also can mean, you know, like an enemy lying in wait. You know, now, something interesting, it also speaks to a wall as going about. So, you know, if think, think bullock, think of a wall that's going about. What does a wall speak to? Why do you build walls around something or fences or hedges? For protection. For protection. Exactly. 
you know. So when you think Bullock, you also think a traveling wall, you know, protector, a traveling protector, someone to protect you. This is why he had to be put on the altar, because God wants to be your only protector. Mm -hmm. Verses 9, uh, chapter 9, verses 5 through 7 says, And they brought that which Moshe commanded before the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the congregation drew near and stood before Yahuwah. I wonder what would happen if all the congregation would literally draw near and stand before Yahuwah. I wonder what would happen if everybody in, in a household would truly and sincerely stand together and draw near before Yahoo. I bet you some special stuff would happen. You know, I bet you it would. Well, I can't bet you. I don't bet no more. But, <laughs> but it's a pretty safe assumption. That something would, something Yasin would happen. <coughs> Verse 6, and Moshe said, this is the thing which Yahuwah commanded that ye should do. And the glory, the glory of Yahuwah shall appear unto you. <coughs> Could this be a recipe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This might be a recipe. Anybody gonna try the recipe? Yep. Yes. Try the recipe, see if it would still work. Hallelujah. It was working back then. It wouldn't answer. We're trying to see. Come, somebody come back and let us know. Because <laughs> I think this recipe, it may still work. Yeah. Verse 7 And Moshe said unto Aaron, Go unto the altar and offer thy sin offering and thy burnt offering and make an atonement for thyself and for the people. And offer the offering of the people and make an atonement for them as Yahuwah commanded. Now you can't leave out this part if you're going to follow the recipe. You got to go into the altar. You got to go before Yah and you got to offer your sin offering. Where's our sin offering? Well, how are you going to keep the recipe if you don't know what the sin offering is? Yahushua. That's the sin offering. All right, come on, y'all. Y'all done took your thinking caps off. Put them back on. If you're going to go go into the altar, you got to have your sin offering. We got Yahushua. Yeah. He, he will more than suffice. Amen? Yeah, more than, yes. All right. And you need to take your burnt offering. What is your burnt offering? Hmm? Yourself? No flesh. How is yourself... Burn off. Say again. All those things not of Yah. Well, how do you present yourself as a burn offering then? Yeah, putting those things on the altar. I'm thinking of a particular verse. Huh? What? What was that? Yes, by presenting yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Yah. Key word in that phrase is holy and acceptable. Because you don't want to present a sacrifice that is not acceptable. Amen? So this is part of the recipe. When you draw near, you got to make sure you A, have your sin offering, Yahushua. You B, have your burnt offering, that's yourself, dedicated to Yah as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. What does holy mean? Set apart. There you go. Set apart for Yah's purposes. Anything can be set apart. That don't make it holy. I can set this water bottle apart from these other items on the table. Is it holy? No, it isn't. But it's set apart. And so many people want to be set apart. 
Yeah. You know, the monks think they're holy because they set themselves apart. Because mm -hmm. they go and live in a, in a cave up in a mountain. Mm -hmm. Does that make them holy? No. It certainly makes them set apart. <laughs> you know, but holy is only that which is set apart unto Yah for his purposes. Mm -hmm. What's the most holy thing in your, in your house? The toilet brush. The toilet brush. <laughs> right, the toilet brush. Absolutely. <laughs> Because you're not going to use that toilet brush for any other purpose than, other than cleaning that toilet. Right? I hope so. <laughs> I pray that you don't. <laughs> That's what makes it the most holy or most kodesh item in your house. It's because it's dedicated for one purpose. And it's only used for that purpose. And you want to present yourself as a living sacrifice, as close as you can get to that toilet brush as possible. That is, you want to be used for one purpose. And that is to be Yah's purpose. And then, you would no doubt be holy and acceptable unto Yah. Amen? Amen. I hope y'all getting this down, yeah. those who said they was going to try the recipe. Mm -hmm. You got to have a full recipe. Can't be leaving stuff out. You know, otherwise it's not going to turn out right. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't want that Sayer to wake back up, you know. <laughs> All right, let me stop. All right. Now, you also, it says, um, in that burnt offering, and make atonement for thyself and for the people. You know, that's how you go before Yah and you cover yourself. The blood of Yahshua covers us of our sins. Amen? Amen. You know, and us being holy and acceptable and covered of our sins, we can boldly go before the throne. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, and the glory of Yahuwah shall appear unto us. Mm -hmm. I do believe that recipe will still work. Oh, yeah. All right, y'all who, who said y'all going to try that recipe, y'all let me know. I, I've, been, I've been working on it myself. <laughs> I've done it once and it, it worked. Now, y'all let me know if it's still working, though. That was some years ago, and I've been trying it ever since. And, you know, I think I, I'm still tweaking. I'm still yeah. tweaking. You know, <laughs> let me have my first reading. Read Leviticus nine eight through fourteen. And Aaron, Aaron therefore went unto the altar and slew the calf of the sin offering which was for himself. And the sons of Aaron brought the blood unto him. And he dipped his finger in the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar and poured out the blood at the bottom of the altar. But the fat and the kidneys and the caul above the liver of the sin offering, he burned upon the altar as Yahuwah commanded Moses. And the flesh and the hind he burnt with fire without the camp. And he slew the burnt offering, and Aaron's son presented unto him the blood, which he sprinkled wrong about upon the altar. And he presented the burnt offering unto him with the pieces thereof and the head, and he burnt them upon the altar. And he did wash the inwards and the legs and burnt them upon the burnt offering on the altar. Okay. It says Aaron therefore went into the altar and slew the calf of uh, the sin offering. Slew the one that was revolving through the Moedim, going around the cycles, the way of Elohim. Uh, for himself, and and he took and put the blood where it's supposed to go. And verse ten tells us that the fat of the kidneys, and we know the fat means the best, the choiciest um, aspect, uh, 
and kicking speaks to intent and purposes. So speaking of, you know, your best intent or purposes or, or that which is greatest in your life that caused you to stray, you know, the intent and purposes that that was that's most to blame to cause you to stray, that caused you to have to make the sacrifice to begin with, whereas you transferred your sins onto it and and transferred this innocence onto yourself. And the call above the liver, that is what remains after um, you went through some heavy dip difficulty, you know. Sometimes you go through a heavy difficulty and, and you, you got some resentment left, you know. And then then that, would, that would be that call, you know. Or you got, some, you got some anger left, you know, left over, you know. That would be that call or whatever's, whatever's left, you know. Maybe some jealousy that's left or some envy or some covetousness or some lasciviousness or what have you, whatever's left over that's not right, Yah wants you to put it on the altar so that he might consume it. Hmm. Okay? You know, now it's amazing how people can go through things and Yah bring them through. It may be heavy. That's what the liver speaks of, something heavy. You know, something burdensome. But it's amazing how people can go through something burdensome, something heavy and give Yah the glory for bringing them through it but yet still hold on to stuff that's left over after he brought them through it, such as resentment and anger and, and, and ill will and things of the such. Amen. Well, y'all say, no. No, I don't want you to do that. I want you to put that on the altar that I might consume it from you. And this speaks of the sin offering. And it goes in verse 11, it says, In the flesh and the hide, he burnt with fire without the camp. Okay, so we see in verse 10, we see the stuff that was put on the altar. The altar is where? Where do we find the altar of Elohim? Absolutely, the entrance of the temple in the tabernacle. Come on, y'all. I mean, verse 11 just, you know... It, it tells you pretty much. It, you take the flesh and the hide that he burnt with fire without the camp. So the altar must be where? In the camp? In the tabernacle? In the inner, inner place? So this is speaking about the work that's being done on the inside and the work that's being done on the outside. The work that's being done on the inside can't nobody see but you. You know, hence... It's speaking to your intent and your purposes, what's left over in your heart after you don't went through a heavy ordeal. Mm -hmm. You know, these things are things that takes place on the inside, where can't nobody see but you. They don't, they don't nobody know they're there but you. See, but y'all, he wants you to be purified of sin on the inside <laughs> as well as the outside. Yes. Amen? Amen? You know, so verse 11, he says, the flesh and the hide. He burnt with fire without the camp. Now, these are the things that you can see on the outside. Hence, they're taken outside the camp and they're consumed outside because the people who are outside the camp, that is the people who are not inside you, which, you know, I hope there ain't too many people in you, but uh, <laughs> the people that's outside you, they're able to look and they, they can see the flesh, your flesh weighs your hide be burnt with fire. They can see y'all consuming these negative aspects out of your life. So if they're on the outside looking in, they should see y'all who's the consuming fire consuming these negative aspects of your life. See, because when you have that negativity on the inside, it will manifest itself on the outside. And the people on the outside, they will be able to take note of it by simply looking at you from the outside. Amen? Messiah says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak them. So we can tell what's on the inside just simply by looking and listening to what comes out of the person and what they do on the outside. See, but when a person is really seeking and drawing near to Yah, then it should be evident on the outside. They should see, because those on the outside should see that flesh and that hide being consumed and the dung, which is not here, but uh, all that filth 
being consumed by Yah. See, and that's, isn't that a beautiful picture? That's a beautiful picture right here in his word. You know, verse, uh, where are we at? Verse, verse, verse 12, and he slew the burnt offering. And Aaron's son presented unto him the blood and sprinkled round about upon the altar. And the burnt offering speaks of one dedicated to Yah. And they presented the burnt offering unto him with the pieces thereof in the head. And burnt, burnt them upon the altar. You know, what's, in, what's going on in the head? Thoughts. This, this is also that inner work. Yeah. You know, we was talking about those toxic thoughts earlier, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, let yeah. y'all consume them. Yeah. Put them on the altar. Mm -hmm. Let y'all consume them. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it says in verse 13, And they presented the burnt offering unto him with the pieces thereof in the head. And verse 14, And he did wash the inwards and the legs and burnt them up upon the burnt offering on the altar. Right. Now it's talking about the inwards and the legs, and it's telling you where they're being burnt. So what is it? What, what is it talking about? Is it talking about you know? Uh, it's talking about an inward work, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, the inward speaks to what? Anybody remember? The emotions. Mm -hmm. The inward speaks to the seat of emotions. See, and, and a lot of times, you know, we have these negative emotions. Mm -hmm. You know. These negative emotions, even though, you know, we done, we done tried to get rid of uh, the intents and purposes, the negative intents and purposes, you know, and the stuff that, that's left over, like the car, you know, sometimes there's still some, some negative uh, emotions that's left over. Well, you know, and sometimes we feel justified hmm. in having them. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Come on now. Sometimes we feel justified yeah. in having some of these negative emotions. Yeah. <clears throat> because you may be thinking, well, if they just have done this or that or the other, you know, then they wouldn't be in this. You know, or if they wouldn't have done done me like that or done so and so like that, wherever the case may be, sometimes we feel justified in having negative emotions. And the leg speaks of what? The walk. So negative emotions that causes us to walk a certain way with oftentimes with certain people. And sometimes it's across the board, but oftentimes, you know, it's with certain people because you feel a certain way about these certain people and you feel justified for feeling that way. You feel justified for feeling, you know, uh, well, you know, because they're a crackhead, you know, I can treat them any old kind of way. You know, and you feel justified in treating them that way because of what you see. Yeah. So it causes you to act a certain way. It causes your walk to be kind of off or ugly towards them mm -hmm. or people of that kind. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, you know, crackhead stole something from you uh, once upon a time and now you take it out on all crackheads. Mm -hmm. You know, and it causes you, you to have this this this. This anger towards crackheads. You know, I just don't like crackheads. <laughs> you know, hey, I can't stand them. You know, or, or maybe liars or, or whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. Right, right. You know, but Yah is saying, you know, to wash these inwards and these legs. See, in other words, he's saying, what do you wash it with? The word. The word. The, word. the water of the word. Mm -hmm. See, Y'all are saying, put the word on these things. Yeah. You know, okay, you may be feeling that way and you feel like you're justified, but if you really justified, then the word will bear witness, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's right, yeah. And if you're not justified, then the word will wash, wash it away, yeah. that unjustification away. Yeah, yeah. Or wash that justification away, I should say. Right? Right. Yeah. You know, so that's what we're called to do. Wash it with the word. See, because you got to re remember, we feel justified. Mm -hmm. We feel like we're we in right standing. Mm -hmm. But we only know if we're, if we're in right standing, you know, if the word agrees with us. That's right. Because we can't define right for ourselves. That's right. <laughs> and that's a real important concept that a lot of people, 
you know, don't understand. See, a lot of you got a lot of quote unquote Christians, Christians that want to live their life based upon right and wrong, good and evil, but they want to live their life based upon their sense of right and wrong and their sense of good and evil. That's right. See, but you can't do that because the only thing what's right is dependent upon whomever created the thing. Because whomever created the thing is the only one who knows the purpose in which he created it, what he created it for. That's right. You know, for instance, this is a table, and it was created to sit things upon, and that's not to say that it wouldn't work for anything else. You know, I may use it to change light bulbs. And every time I want to change a light bulb, I pull the table out, set it up, and stand on top of the table, and I can reach the light bulb and change it. Works great. So I'm, I'm, I'm using it right, right? No, I'm not using it correctly. Just because it worked, don't make it right. That's true. See, and that's the whole thing with people, you know, in this walk. They do things, and because it worked for them, you know, they misconstrue that with it being right. Yeah, yeah. Nothing is right unless it aligns with the purpose of the one who created it. And if I, if I look up, if there was a such a thing as a manual for a table, and I, if I looked it up, that would not be one of the, no. the purposes that it was created for. Right. So therefore, even though it works for that purpose, that doesn't make it right. right. And I would be using it in a wrong manner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it wasn't made for that purpose, even though it serves the purpose. Yeah. You feel me? Yes. Yeah. You know, because... The creator of a thing has dominion over it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's a maxim. The creator of a thing has dominion over it. And the creator of the thing is the only one who truly knows the purpose for why he created it. That's right. So he's the only one who can tell somebody what's right and wrong about it. That's right. It may look right to you, but he knows he ain't created for that purpose, so it's really wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, just take that into your life. There are some things that seem right to you, but Yah has given us, a, us an owner's manual for these bodies, and he say it's wrong. Yeah. I don't care how good the pork chop tastes. <laughs> Hello? That's right. I don't care if you don't do drop dead tomorrow because you ate it last week. <laughs> it's wrong simply because Yah said it's wrong. That's right. Yeah. Because he's the creator of these of these um, bodies, mm -hmm. and he said he didn't create it for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, just because it worked, just because you can eat it and it make you feel good, it worked, don't make it right. Mm -hmm. Same principle. Everybody with me? Yeah. I ain't heard nobody feelings, did I? No. <laughs> All right. So, you know, I just wanted to uh, go there for a minute, see, because a lot of people think, you know, Things that they do are right, and when when you line them, when you when you wash them with that with that word, mm. they just go right down the drain. Okay. You know because they were they weren't never right. Mm. You know and they feel justified in doing them because they really in their heart they sincere in their heart they sincerely think that it's right, but they're just sincerely wrong. Amen. Correct. You know the heart is utterly wicked. Who can know it? That's what the word teaches us. Amen. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we want to look to Yah's word for what's right and wrong. Yes. Because he's the only one who can tell us, because he created us, so he's the only one who truly knows the purpose and intent of why he created these us as a creation. And he, being the creator, has dominion over his creation. Yes. And those who don't want to adhere to his dominion are in error. They are mm -hmm. wrong. They're not in good, they're in evil, you know, and that's what one needs to understand and, and live their life in accordance to what the Creator said is right and wrong, what He said is good and evil, you know, and that you do that by whatever it is that you have conviction of, that you feel justified of, you know, wash it with the Word, see what the Word has to say about it, this is why Y'all had the priest to do this because you're not sure you're supposed to go to the one whom he put in place mm -hmm. who's supposed to know. And then he's supposed to take the word 
and wash it over you, wash your inwards, you know, these emotions that you're having that's causing you to operate concerning these certain type of people or what have you in a certain way and see if it's truly justified. And if it doesn't, if the word washes it away, then you're supposed to let it go away and be consumed of Yah. Mm -hmm. That's how that works. That's right. Mm -hmm. We have our next reader read Leviticus 9, 15 through 20. And he brought <clears throat> and he brought the people's offering and took the goat, which was the which was the sin offering for the people, and slew it, and offered it for sin at first. And he brought the bur the burnt offering and offered it according to the manner. And he brought the meat offering and took it and took a handful thereof and burnt it upon the altar. Beside the burnt beside the burnt the beside the burnt sacrifice of the morning, he slew also the bullet and the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings, which was for the people. And Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood which he sprinkled sprinkled upon the altar round about. And the fat of the bullock, and of the ram, the rump, and that of, and that which covereth the inwards, and the kidneys, and the caul above the liver, and they put the fat upon the breast, and he burnt the fat upon the altar. Okay, will the plea, will the real Hebrew word first please stand up? <laughs> you know, now we see here, as at the first. This is actually reshown, number 7223. This is the Hebrew word for first. It means first in place, time, or rank. Okay? So, this is what I was expecting to see. And what verse was that? Verse 2 or 3? You know, this is the word I was expecting to see for first, but it was actually Ben, son, number 1121. You know, this is the word for first. Now, something else I want to call attention to, uh, here in verse uh, in nine, in verse 15, it says he brought the people's offering and took the goat. Now, this is the same word that's translated as kid in the previous um, verses. You know, uh, let me see what verse was that. Verse 3. This is the same word that was uh, translated as kid. Now, why they translated kid in verse 3 and goat here in verse 15? How come you just couldn't say kid again? See, that's the stuff I don't like. <laughs> See, because that's confusing. Yeah. Is, it, is that confusion or what? Yeah. That's confusion. If you're going to translate it as kid, then just leave it kid. What's wrong with saying the kid? And he took the kid, which was for the sin offering. Mm -hmm. It just told us about the kid. Why, why not use it? Why you change it to goat? And have everybody thinking it's the same et, you know, word for goat. No, this is the word for kid, sayir, the half beast, half man, the farm. And he brought the people's offering and took the sayir, which was the sin offering for the people, and slew it and offered it for a sin. Now, take note also that Yah, that his Ruach HaKodesh, he could have chose to put ets there, or eights. Uh, how you say that word? Eights? Something like that. Uh, go. A's. Yeah. Now he could have chose to put A's there. But he didn't. He chose Sayir instead. Why do you think that is? Even because he wanted you to know that this, this, it's this dual nature thing. This half beast, half man that he wants to consume. And not just, not just the goat. That we read about, uh, not just the A's that we read about, the, the, the brave and determined, the strong, um, stout, brave and determined. You see how y'all does that? Mm -hmm. You know, he's singling that out. So this is the, these are the things that when you're studying your word, these are the things that you look for. Why is he singling this out? He had two different words that he had just used. He could have chose the other one. Why he chose this one? He didn't choose it just haphazardly. It's because this is what he wanted to point out. All right, verse 17 says, And he brought the meat offering. The meat offering was a non-flesh offering, 
you know, it was uh, uh, pretty much bread, food. And, of course, we know whenever we see food or, or, or bread, it speaks to teachers and instructions. So any wrong teachings and instructions that causes you to stray, Yah wants you to put it on his altar that he might consume it. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And take note that it's upon the altar because that's something that goes on on the inside. You know, and he want and look look where you're supposed to put it beside beside the burnt sacrifice of the morning. You know, so he wants you to take those those Aaron teachings and instructions, and and let him consume it with any and everything that's uh uh of, of your daily walk, because you de you dedicated yourself your life unto him, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, as a living sacrifice. And you live in accordance to your teachings and instructions mm -hmm. of, of Elohim. So if you have any errant teachings and instructions of Elohim, then it will, it will cause you to stray. Mm -hmm. So Yah wants that to, to be put on the altar. Anything that's errant by way of his teachings and instructions, he wants you to put it on the altar along with the burnt sacrifice with you dedicating yourself uh, daily to him. You know, that's what the morning... The burnt sacrifice of the morning typifies because the morning sacrifice, there was two sacrifices every day. And that was those was burnt sacrifices. The burnt sacrifices was offered twice a day in the morning and in the evening. You know, in other words, you know, you want to dedicate yourself, you know, to him 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. In the day, during the daytime and during the nighttime. Yeah, that's right. He wants you even to dedicate your, when you're sleeping, dedicate mm -hmm. that rest to him. Yes. You know, he want he wanted to consume every aspect of you. Yeah, he he he, he jealous like that. He wanted it all. Yes. He wanted it all. And then verse 18 says, He slew also the bullock and the ram for a sacrifice of peace, peace offerings. You know, if you want to be at peace with Yah, then you definitely want to put on his altar any and all. Moving walls, traveling walls, any and all protectors. You know, in other words, he said you don't need no other protection other than him. That's right. Yeah. So anything that you're trusting in to protect you, whether it's your bank account, whether it's it's your job, whether it's it's your house with the with the security alarm, whether it's the camera system that you don't attached to it so everybody else can see inside your house. Then you, whatever it is that you trust in him to protect you other than him, he wants you to put it on his altar that he might consume. Hallelujah. Now, don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm not saying that, you know, these things can't be useful for you. What I'm saying is that your trust should be in him first That's and right. foremost. Right. That's right. That's right. You know, and if he put on your heart to do this, that, or the other, then you do whatever, whatever he tell you. Mm -hmm. You know, but he's the he's the protector, yeah. and don't forget it. That's right. He's the provider, and don't forget it. Amen. You know, see that's the problem. A lot of people get caught up in thinking GM is their provider, mm -hmm. or Detroit Edison, or, or or whomever it may be. That's that that that's their provider. You know, and when they tell them to jump, they they say ha ha. Mm -hmm. You know, and they say, well, y'all gave me the, uh, he gave me the job. He didn't give it to you to put it before him. That's right. Now, I'm, I'm going to get somebody in trouble. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me move on. Uh, and the ram. The ram was our yield, and it's, it, it spoke to uh, a strong, a strong uh, chief, strong, powerful chief. You know, so here it is. Any other protector other than Yahushua, let Yah consume. You know, because you don't need nothing other than Elohim. That's right. And here it is in verse 19. It says, the fat of the bullock and other ram and the rump. The rump speaks to, he's still talking about the same thing. The rump speaks to a strong authority. You know, Yah wants all, all everything that you think that covers you. Mm -hmm. The fat of the bullock, that is... The um, traveling wall, the traveling, the, the protector, traveling protector, 
and the ram, the one that you think that is strong, that you think is a chief, the one that you think is powerful to protect you, the rump, the strong authority that you think that covers you. These these words, the N words, they were they were um, put there. It doesn't actually say that. And I, I and and I think it's because Yah wants you to know that your traveling protector, your your strong powerful chief, your strong authority, if it's not him, then it don't really cover you. <laughs> if you think it cover you, it don't really cover you. Put it on his altar. He won. And the kidneys, the intent and purposes that you think that uh, that 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 you have to um, speak to or act to, and anything that's left over the liver, that is any heavy difficulty that you may have just went through. Mm. We talked about that. Put that on the altar. Mm. And verse twenty says, and they put the fat upon the breast, and he burnt the fat upon the altar. You know, so <clears throat> the fat. Upon the breast, the breast speaks to that which is most seen. So it's speaking to, like, the outward walk. You know, and Yah wants, he, but he, he don't burn the breast, but he burnt the fat. He burnt the fat <laughs> upon the altar because Yah wants, he wants the best to go to him. And the priests get to keep the breast because they're supposed to be walking around, setting the example. They're the one that's most seen of Elohim. So... When you look at them, you're supposed to see an example of righteousness. That's the way it's supposed to be. Leviticus 9, 21 through 24. My last reader, please. And the breast and the right shoulder Aaron waved for a wave offering before Ahur, as Moses commanded. And Aaron lifted up his hand towards the people and blessed them, and came down from offering of the sin offering, and the burnt offering, and the peace offerings. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation, and came out, and blessed the people, and the glory of Yahuwah appeared unto all the people. And there came and there, <coughs> and there came a fire from before Yahuwah, and consumed upon the altar of the burnt offering, from the, and the fat, when all the peop, people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we see here it's talking about the breast again and the right shoulder. The right shoulder speaks to, the right speaks to the stronger, you know, the stronger part. Because most people are right-handed and, and the right side is their stronger side. And the shoulder speaks to the overflow. So it's speaking about, you know, the strongest of your overflow, which is supposed to be for, for, for the priest, the breast, and the right shoulder. So in other words, Yah is saying, that anything that, that things that you want to dedicate to him, you should give it to the priest, and it should be of your overflow. Most of these, these uh, well, not most, all of these offerings were voluntary. You know, there was no one knocking at the tent, tent door of of Israel saying, "Hey, you know, you owe a sin offering, you know, or you owe a trespass offering, or mm -hmm. you owe a peace offering." Or you know, a burnt offering. It, there was no one knocking at the tents, you know, dragging them out and saying, "Pay up." You know, you you gotta you gotta present this offering. It was a voluntary system. It still is a voluntary system. You know, and it's it's supposed to be of, you know, your right shoulder. It's supposed to be of your overflow. We spoke about that before. I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> and Aaron. Waved before a wave offering before Yahuwah. And Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people and blessed them. And came down from, from the offering of the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings. Okay, now part of these offerings were burnt outside the camp, right? Mm -hmm. And this is where Aaron was and he blessed them. He, he blessed them outwardly. And then it comes down in verse 23. It says, And Moshe and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people. Mm -hmm. So it's showing them being blessed twice. They're being blessed outwardly and they're being blessed inwardly. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you truly serve Elohim, and when you truly serve Yahushua, he will bless you outwardly mm -hmm. as well as inwardly. Yes. He will bless you so other people can see. 
and he'll bless you in the inward places where don't nobody know but you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Talk about that peace, that shalom that surpasses all understanding. No, no, can't nobody see that but you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I wish you could see it. I wish I could show you mine because that's something that he's giving. He didn't give me anything else. He's giving me that. I don't worry about spit. That's right. <laughs> Nothing. Praise y'all. If y'all don't take care of it, then it just won't get handled. You know, I don't worry about nothing. You know, and that's probably because, you know, I stay on top of my square. Now, if I wasn't on top of my square, I'd probably be worried. But, you know, I've learned through the years, I've learned to stay on top of my square. Because, <laughs> you know, I know I serve, I know Yah is real. I know that with all my heart. And I know he's mine. You know, and I know if I'm on top of my square, then... You know, it's not, it's not really nothing that can come can come at me. That's right. Y'all got me. So what is there to worry about? That's right. That's right. And if I'm going through the trials of, of, of yo, then I can count it joy. That's right. Because I'm, I still know I'm on top of my square. I didn't do nothing wrong. So this got to be a trial. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. Right. I'm worthy right. to go through a trial for That's his right. name's sake. That's right. And his word say rejoice, be exceedingly glad. <laughs> When you're persecuted for his name's sake. Amen? Amen. So either way, I'm winning. So I'm not worrying. I'm just going to go through and keep it moving. I'm telling you. I wish I could share that that feeling I have on the inside concerning these, um, this thing right here. You know? Because he will bless you in Yes. You know, whereas you don't, you, don't have, you don't have a care in the world. You don't, you don't worry about nothing. You know... No, 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 no. Don't get it twisted. It's not that you can't see. It's not that you become blind. It's not that you become ignorant. You're not just ignoring stuff. Because I hear a lot of people, I see a lot of people, you know, they, you know, they just ignore stuff. Uh -huh. You know, no, you don't ignore stuff. Ignoring stuff will get you twisted for real. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, ign you don't ignore stuff. Just because you see a truck coming and you in the middle of the street, you don't say, well, y'all going to stop that truck, and I'm just going to ignore it. No. No. That, that's, that's, that's not how this thing works. You know, and I just want to, I, I got to put this out there because a lot of people take that, and, you know, and they run with it. Yeah. You know, no. You do everything that you can do, you know, and then y'all takes it from there. Learn the example through Scripture. What do you think would have happened to Israel when they went in there, went over into the promised land to fight them giants? And Yah had already told them that they were going to get the victory. Did he not? Yeah. He already told them. Go on over there, evict them, kill everything. Man, woman, children, the animals, do it. I got you. Go ahead. Get. <laughs> right? Now, what do you think would have happened if they had got over there, they got all suited and booted? with their armor on and they got over there and got in the midst of them giants and was like, yeah, yeah, come on. And then they just stood there. <laughs> they got slaughtered. Mm -hmm. You got to do all that you can do. You know, I don't care if you if you go before the giant and you close your eyes and you start doing the old girl with me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to do all that you can do. And y'all will take it from there. That's how this thing works. And once you know that you've done all that you can do, then you know it's y'all turn. Then you know. Now you don't have nothing to worry about. Short of doing everything that you can do, you need to get busy. Don't ignore the problem. Don't ignore the issue. But after you've done, done everything that you can do, because you can't do no more than anything that you can do. That you, how you going to do more than everything that you can do? You can't. Right. So then that's when you trust Yah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. All right, I don't know about going, well, Pastor said, you know, <laughs> Yah got it. I ain't going to worry about it. And you're just going to sit in the middle of the street and watch this car <laughs> run you over. <laughs> no. No, we're not going to have that. I'm going to make sure I'm explicitly clear. You do everything that you can do, then you wait on Yah. I'm just going to sit here. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on Yah. Well, I'm telling you, you got to wash it with that word. That's 
But that's all I have for you today. Pray it was a blessing unto you. Amen.